The sea water you see here is a part of 35 km stretch that has created a world of difference. This stretch of water between two Indonesian islands, Bali and Lombok, is just about 35 km wide. But it is enough to create a complete contrast in species present on each island. As we all know, the region of Australia and Southeast Asia, especially the islands of Indonesia, presents a fascinating tapestry of lush green landscapes with unique creatures and plants. The region's flora and fauna are incredibly rich and often include species found nowhere else on the earth. Amidst this natural wonderland, there exists an invisible border that shapes the destiny of entire ecosystems. This invisible border runs through the Indonesian archipelago between the islands of Bali and Lombok and then northward between Borneo and Sulawesi. This invisible border is called the Wallace Line. This imaginary Wallace Line creates a biogeographic divide distinguishing plants and animals on the right side versus the left side. So let us look at Borneo and Sulawesi, amongst the largest islands in Indonesia. Borneo, which is on the left side of the Wallace Line, does not have any marsupial mammals, while the neighboring island of Sulawesi is a treasure trove of biodiversity with surprising number of endemic species, including the marsupials. Here you will find marsupials like beer cuscus and dwarf cuscus, as well as other animals like tarsier and macaque. Wallace Line is named after British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace. Russell Wallace conducted many expeditions between 1854 and 1862 in Indo-Malay region. It was during his field research in Indonesia, Wallace began to notice differences between the fauna in the east and the west of the archipelago. Wallace discovered that animal species found to the west of the Wallace line were similar to species found on the Asian mainland, while species found to the east of the line were largely of Australian descent. So what caused this divide? When Wallace originally publicized this line in the middle of the 19th century, he alluded to species evolving by adapting to their environment. Interestingly, this Wallace analysis has also helped his contemporary Charles Darwin record his research on the theory of evolution. Anyway, with advancements in science, we learned that the natural history of this region is heavily complicated and dictated by geological forces such as plate tectonics and volcanism. Millions of years ago, sea levels were considerably lower and the land was joined together to form one huge landmass on which numerous species lived, roamed and reproduced freely. This continued until the end of the ice ages when the sea level rose and plate tectonics started to take effect. This pulled these landmasses apart allowing water to flood the open spaces between them. As different islands of Asia and Australia formed, the species locked into them began to evolve in different directions. This also includes marine life and birds. Some aquatic species find it difficult to travel because of the strong currents that run through the strait. While bird species observe the Wallace line because many birds do not like to cross even the smallest stretches of open ocean water. As time passed, isolated populations of species on either side of the Wallace line evolved independently. 
resulting in distinct flora and fauna on each side. The Wallace line is more than just a geographic marker. The concept has played a crucial role in shaping early thoughts on evolution and biogeography. In the pages of natural history, Alfred Russell Wallace's work will always be recognized and appreciated for highlighting the forces of time and geography that have sculptured the flora and fauna of the world. Thank you.